This is Long Way to the Top, and I'm your host, Shane Bryan. In the words of the immortal ACDC, it is harder than it looks. These interviews will give you a glimpse into the lives of the artists that we've sung along with, danced and rocked out to. Some go deep into their past and others celebrate their recent releases. But all of them show that regardless of who you are, it's always a long way to the top. Welcome to Long Way to the Top. In 2020, we were doing a live breakfast show every morning for the Bad Boys podcast to help us cope with lockdowns and everything else going on. So many amazing guests dropped in to say hello, but these guys were my favourite. We literally had every member of the latest lineup of Jefferson Starship on screen, and it was complete pandemonium. Everyone except drummer Donnie Baldwin, who was having trouble connecting. Every now and then you'll hear Donnie jump on and ask where we all are. It was the most fun, spontaneous and funniest interview ever. It was pure chaos. I'm now grateful to say that I have an interview with lead singer Kathy Richardson since for an upcoming episode and I'm in contact with each one. I'm also thankful to include David Freyberg in that category too, one of the OG Jefferson Airplane members. This is Long Way to the Top with Jefferson Starship. We literally have a cast of thousands here today. Well, we've got how many? Uh Seven. Seven of us anyway. (laughs) Your county's uh, really good, mate. Yeah, we actually have uh, the incredible Jefferson Starship on the show today. How are we all, guys? Hello. Good. We're good. Thanks. Good Seth. morning. Well, yeah. So it's it's morning for us, but <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Your day. How's it tomorrow? <laughs> now, now, Kathy, you're actually you're actually sitting there with a cocktail, right? I am. It is five thirty in the evening here. Um, I've been mixing. Yeah, uh, we're working on a little and another home video thing and uh it requires it requires alcohol <laughs> and high parts what, what's what's in it Let, tell us tell us what's the kathy cocktail oh the kathy richardson is yeah. it's tito's vodka soda and lime wow and it's got to be in a tall glass the taller the better and I also enjoy a straw. Now we've got uh, David Freeberg, we've got Donnie Baldwin, we've got Chris Smith, we've got Kathy Richardson and Jude Gold. And uh, obviously the, the one without a name uh, is Donnie Baldwin. And uh, I'll, I'll just do a little bit of a, an intro to you guys. Uh, so there has not been a lot of bands that we could say uh, that they've been around for, you know, with major hits in the 60s, 70s and 80s, but this band can. Originally known as Jefferson Airplane, in the 70s they became known as Jefferson Starship. If you grew up in the 80s, you knew them as Starship and they boldly proclaimed that we built this city on rock and roll. We're going to find out which city in a minute. Uh, This, of course, is the legacy of the current lineup, which features original members David Freeberg and drummer Donnie Baldwin, 25-year member keyboardist Chris Smith, as well as frontwoman Kathy Richardson, who was handpicked by the late Paul Katner, uh, and the guitarist, the incredible guitarist, Jude Gold. Together, they are Jefferson Starship. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hey. What's happy to be here? I smell smoke. <laughs> smell smoke. <laughs> now, hey, now, now, you guys are actually in the in the middle of of fires at the moment, right? In, we are. Yeah. I, I California. Is, is yeah. everything okay Kathy, over there? Fine. I'm fine. Well, yeah. No, actually, yeah, Cal- Kathy, you're on the Cal- only. You're on the only on the other East kinds coast? of smoke floating around this house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Kathy, you're on the east coast, right? No. I am in the middle. In the I'm middle. in Chicago. Oh, She's nice. in the middle. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, uh, actually, Coast. talking about that smoke, I heard a little story about the name Jefferson Airplane. So, what does Jefferson? Where did Jeff, the name Jefferson Airplane come from, David? Uh, I don't know what story to tell you. Well, I, I I heard a little story that Jefferson Airplane it was actually a reference to something that you might hold the. The the week. I was wondering if you're going to go for that one, the little matchstick. <laughs> <laughs> you take a paper matchstick and split it down the middle, and you can fit a little bit of the end of the a little roach in there, and you could. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> that, that, that was, was the named story. after the band, though. That the was band. named after the band. Was it really? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the, the Jefferson, I think that was a, a, a tribute to old blues singers. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a, a joke, old blue singer, like, like blind, blind Jefferson airplane, right. kind of. You know what I mean? Blind yeah. lemon Jefferson. I mean, that probably came from all that. Somebody made up a joke, I think. <laughs> well, it was a pretty good joke. I wasn't there at the time, so I don't. But I, I heard good, I'm, I'm good, good report. I think that's really. I'm more of a, I'm more of a, a progressive rock fan. You know, I love the the seventies music, so. You know, when I think about you guys, I think about, you know, your, your Jefferson Starship time more than anything, you know. Uh, I mean, it was a, such a, a, a crazy time. And, David, you're actually a bad boy as well. You're, you're, you're literally a bad boy because. <laughs> I, I, I did some time. Yeah. You did some time. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's been expunged. That, <laughs> it's all been expunged. Yeah, oh, good boy. It doesn't exist anymore. It's uh, been expunged. I know, but it's a good story, though, isn't it? Really, <laughs> well, it was. It was a definite uh, c- comedy of errors every time it happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you joined uh, Jefferson Airplane uh, in '72, uh, yeah, and uh, that was after after your, your time in the in the in the big house, uh, and you yeah. you joined <laughs> Quicksilver Messenger Service, the the band before that I was yes. in, yeah. I don't, I don't know whether anybody got to Australia, Quicksilver Messenger Service. No, it was never really as big. Anyway, so then I went, yes. Yeah. It was well, after J, It was after a, a 45 days, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, a couple of years later, it became, uh, a couple of years later, Jefferson uh, Airplane became Jefferson Starship. What was right. the reason for that name change? Well, because uh, Jeff. Every the two pa- factions in Jefferson Airplane were what well, was Jorma and Jack, the lead guitar player and the bass player, and Paul and Grace, and they were kind of heading different directions. They were still thinking they would get back to get. We, I, w- I was hanging with Paul and Grace, and it seemed like we were felt like we were going to go back out on the road as Jefferson Airplane. But as time went on, it seemed like hey, this isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so Paul and Grace and I had made a couple of records together with more or less the same crew. And we had to go on the road, so we had to call it something. And Paul had had a solo record called "Blows Against the Empire." I don't know whether you got that yeah. got down there or not, but that was that was about a bunch of hippies hijacking the very first starship and populating outer space. And, I have a uh, question about that. Yes. I'm sorry. I was under the impression that aliens had come to earth and that was the starship that they'd hijacked or did they hijack like some kind of NASA thing? Was it an earth person starship or was it aliens? Cause I want to get this right. You, you know, you know, Paul's Paul's plots. They aren't very specific. I don't know. It seemed like the starship was out on there and let's go catch it. So I'm a, okay. <laughs> You, you remember those lyrics, right? Just the regular old starship. <laughs> it was a regular starship. <laughs> old, 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 Amer- old, old Earth starship. The hippies were high anyway, so they didn't have a clue whether they were aliens or not. That's a good question. Thanks, Chris. I've been wondering. Great question. Yeah. Well, now me too. <laughs> have, have you guys got any more questions for yourselves about, about <laughs> the name? Oh, constantly. <laughs> did I answer the question? You did. I you did. I <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a question. Have any of you been to Australia? No. No. I have. No, it's our we dream. It, we were we trying to get there. We made yeah. it to New Zealand last year, but Yeah. How could you come to New Zealand and not not actually jump across the ditch? I don't know how that can happen. <sighs> Johnny it was, was just a thing. Him. We got booked on these festivals to, um with a, a New Zealand promoter. Yeah. And um so we just came over for that. And then went home, but it was great, and we were so close, but yet yeah. so far. Yeah, gosh, we, we would love, love to come. Invite we us. Come. That's yeah. why we signed with Golden Robot Records so that they'll bring us to Australia. Yeah. Now you guys are, are, are obviously still massive with the festivals, right? What song? Well, we were. We were? used to be. Well, we're yeah, with COVID. Right now COVID. we're master sitting at home. Yeah. <laughs> we're big on Zoom now. We're really big on Zoom. We'll forget about 2020. It was a bit of a non-event, really. <laughs> what, Amen. what song is is the song that everyone asks for when you're in concert? Different ages ask for different things. 
Yeah. White Rabbit. Yeah. yeah certainly. We built the city. James. I've lost, I've lost you guys. I don't know where you went. Uh, we're here. Hey, Donnie. Donnie, where are you? Donnie, Donnie is here. No, I don't know. But he's, I, he's just I dro- he's dropping anybody. out. For some. He's he's trying to find himself. I'm here. <laughs> hey, Donnie, are you out in space? <laughs> are you here or are you just frozen? Can anybody hear me? <laughs> yes. No, he's gone now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> imitating Grace Slick's very prominent uh, vibrato. Yeah. <laughs> we're just talking about songs. One of the most unusual ones is uh, Want Somebody to Love, right? It was on a Jim Carrey movie, uh, Cable Guy. I think she thought that she thought it was pretty hilarious herself. She enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a classic. But you know, this is the thing, right? It's one of those songs that we we you, you remember through the ages. Like the moment you even say, "Do you want somebody to love?" It just brings back like all the memories of of where you might have been and, and what where you might have heard it, you know. And and this guy Ooh. remembers it on Jim Carrey. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> I think Jude and I have a similar story with uh, the movie American Pop, right? Uh, right, right. Jude is the animated one, and that song is in it too, and it's great. That was my first, uh, you know, uh, introduction to it. What a cool song! Yeah, yeah. How, how did you guys go coming in? Obviously later. Um, oh, oh yeah, Chris. Obviously, you 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 were there for twenty five years, but particularly Jude and Kathy coming in at such a later date and just being confronted with all of these incredible tunes that you just Kathy like, would do them all when she came in. Yeah, Jude was too. Um, both of us, Jude and I, are the same age, and we both saw Jefferson Starship the first time at the same year, probably nineteen eighty three. Yeah, I was um, to you guys again. Yeah. I don't know and, whether it's due to uh, the fires or Wi-Fi up here. <laughs> Don, Don, Donnie's, Donnie's going to be coming in and out during this interview, I can see. <laughs> he's going to be like, fun. <laughs> and at the end of the interview, he's going to be like, so uh, are we are we good to go? <laughs> are you good? Can you hear what we're doing, Donnie? I want to show you guys this. Pro- this is my uh, Jefferson Starship <laughs> Coke mirror that I got at the carnival when I was like 15 years old. You know, I threw a cool. oh balloon, and this was my prize, my Jefferson Starship Winds of Change mirror. Huge fan. I have all the music on vinyl. He, I went my to connection see is really concert. good. Donnie, are you still talking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't see. It must have been pretty amazing. The mirrors were. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been pretty Hello. amazing to be such a big fan, and then, then to be part of it all. Beyond the wildest dreams, I was. Yeah. I was actually singing with Big Brother and the Holding Company, Janis Joplin's band, and we were opening. I was just. I was so thrilled to get the call. What to the open fuck is going on? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Daddy no. Daddy, no! Where's my people? Daddy, get off the starship! Andy? Donnie's lost on the starship. We can Uh, hear you so Oh, my God. At least still, Kathy, because we really wanted her. Yeah. 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 That's incredible. Uh, You know, like Andrew said, (laughs) this is going to be a crazy interview. Do you guys have Tito's in uh, Australia? Oh Tito's, yeah, God. I think they do, don't they? It's all right. Well, then we'll come. You'll come. Okay, yeah, we, mobile then we can come. Is, yes, uh, limited in support. My mobile vice is limited in support. Oh my God! All right, guys, take it. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. oh my God! Well, this oh, is the most oh. unusual interview we've done. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So, so Kathy and, and Jude, what yeah. out of all of these massive hits, what's the song that you guys love to play? Oh well, <laughs> sorry, I'm weeping. Uh, when I was, uh, we love playing all the songs. Like yeah. ooh, our set. Our current set that we've been playing, well, we, the when before the pandemic, <laughs> it was like literally all hits, 
And then, you know, we're working our new stuff in there. But there's, there, there are so many damn hits. Wow. Like, you can't even. Yeah. So I was in the band. Uh, and I'm still in the band. <laughs> <laughs> Stay where you are. Yeah, I think someone forgot to microdose this morning. He's got beamed up. Get in the star. overboard. Go with the aliens. Yeah. Do we, That's what somebody said on He's the- showing up again. Do we bring him back on? Are we, are we game to bring him back on? That is totally up to you guys. Now you can see what it's about. Uh, we love him. <laughs> he keeps us laughing on the road. Uh, <laughs> we'll try one more time, Donnie. If you, Does it if, work? It, oh, we can is. hear you. Are you there, Donnie? I don't think so. Is, is this a game that you guys play on the road? Where's Donnie? Uh, <laughs> Time. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost my soul. <laughs> we do. <laughs> oh god. Uh, uh, maybe maybe someone can uh, can quickly message Donnie and say, <laughs> uh, you know, that he's yeah. We'll have to we'll have to keep him off so we can keep the interview going. <laughs> no, that's right. He can't he can't see us. Was there anything direct at me? Yeah, there will be if if you can actually come on to you the got show. You back, Kathy, Donnie, <laughs> Donnie. I'm texting you. Hang on. Donnie, no. Get Donnie on your phone, Facetime, and just have yeah, like no. your phone. Yeah, use your phone. Yeah, use your phone. <laughs> it might be better. All right, I'm going to switch him off so we can keep keep the interview going for a little bit. Uh, I, I was actually hoping that Donnie would uh, would be here because uh, because he's actually the 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 one band member that that went through that change from Jefferson Starship to Starship, right? He did. That. Yeah, sure did. Yeah, um, like he built the city. So let's talk about we built this city. Where is the city we're building? I mean, the song talks about City by the Bay, San Fran, which makes sense because in the 60s and 70s, San Francisco was the hub of the music world. The city that rocks, which is Cleveland, and the city that never sleeps, New York. So which city was being built by rock and roll? That was an overdub where they had the radio station guy yeah. and they wanted to, that that was not on the record. That was for radio specifically. Right. And they put all those radio stations on their to you know get radio to play it and radios radio at least in those days loved songs about radio so yeah. that was it really worked because that song got so played yeah uh that everyone I, hated it i think <laughs> when bernie, i think when bernie Taupin wrote it it was really about la i think yeah but yeah. when we played in Christchurch uh after one of their devastating earthquakes that was their call was to great. arm and uh, so it was pretty amazing playing there in the uh, audience of 8,000, saying it louder than we did on stage. So. Wow. <laughs> so I, I guess it's one of those songs that it becomes about becomes about wherever you are, right? It's your big city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, why was the song so polarizing, though? I mean, like, people either love it or hate it. I mean, like, what what was it? I mean, critics hate it, some of them, but most rock fans seem to love it, man. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. We get I a good really think it was just the sheer amount of times it got played on the radio that it burned people yeah. out, but it was yeah. so incredibly popular. It was a number one song. Yeah. You know, it sold multiple millions. Uh, and um, I think that it just, you know, it was one of those things like people heard it so much that they're like, I hate this song now. Or did you yeah. guys play that song, that Gautier song? Over there. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. became. And, and, and we love that song. And then we overplayed it, and now we're like, I can't hear, I can't hear that song yeah. anymore. It's like a Yogi Bearism. Like it's too popular. <laughs> Nobody likes it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think probably that and nothing's going to stop us now. That yeah. was also played pretty heavily as well. Pretty much everybody that was got married during well that song that was their wedding song. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> the most aggressive Jefferson Starship fan I ever met was in. England, some little town we're playing in 2012 and it's getting towards the end of the set and this big dude is down on, and he's pulling on my pant leg. He's like, hey, mate, I brought my girl out here. It's Friday night. Are you going to play? We built a city or what? 
<laughs> Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> so, can someone get, get the bouncer, please? <laughs> did we play it? I wonder. Yeah, did you? Well, I, think that, I don't think we actually did. So I had to run and hide at the end of the night that night. <laughs> That's a terrible story. First time we had to run out of a venue. <laughs> our our band leader used to have a way of just alienating sound men, especially uh, because sound men are security guards. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and the sound would be terrible, and he would start, you know, berating the guy from the stage. You know, you need a girlfriend. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> and um, you know, it resulted yeah. in, in uh, being chased. You guys are really, really grounded. You know, you're really down to earth and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, with the fame that you guys have had over the years. How do you how do you keep it so real all the time? You know, so many people lose their heads at all of that fame and 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 everything else. Is there a secret? Is there something you can share that kind of Donny helps us? Well, David's well, the most famous one, so he'll have to speak to that. <laughs> also, the most humble. Yeah, yeah I, I, I never, I've never taken myself that seriously. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's that that's death. Yeah. yeah, kind of. You know, you can't take it. It's, it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. It can't be all all this uh, me 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 stuff. You know, and that's kind of what really what what makes it weird. Yeah. Although you do get isolated if you get so popular that you know you can't walk out the door without getting you know drawing a crowd. So yeah, that's pretty much my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that. Really hanging out with the people. It's just weird times now. Now we don't know what to do with that, but we love to hug and kiss everybody. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. hope we can get back to that. Yeah, six feet. Yeah, that's right. So you guys have got a brand new album out, uh, which is called Mother Ooh. of the Sun. Uh, yes. And a new single, It's About Time. And um, the, the two singles that are, that are being released off the album, the first one was written by Grace Slick and Jude. And then the second one, and and Kathy as well. Probably most. I don't know whether how much Grace wrote actually, but Kathy and Grace wrote the words. I'm sure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. She, uh, well, I had been hanging out with Grace in L.A. and um, we were watching in January of 2017. We were watching the women's marches uh, in in D.C. and all around the country here, and. Um, and she was really excited about seeing a people in the streets. She was like, this is just like the sixties. This is just what we used to do. And you got to keep marching. You got to keep fighting. You take two steps forward and one step back and you got, it's the same stuff that keeps coming up over and over. And, uh, I said, you know, we should write a song about that, you know, encapsulates the women's movement. And isn't it about time that women get to, take charge for at least, you know, the next 400 years and just see how it goes. And she got really behind that idea. And uh, she wrote these lyrics and sent them to me a few months later. And, uh, you know, three hand page, handwritten pages of lyrics. And it's about time was the big hook I gathered because she wrote it over and over again. And I uh, wrote the chorus and then Jude had the great riff that, you know, he'd been playing around and sound checking stuff. And I said, I think I can marry that with this chorus. And then we used some of Grace's lyrics and I wrote some more lyrics and um, the song was born. And then the other song that's yeah. being uh, released is uh, Don't Be Sad Anymore. And that was written uh, with uh, Chris. You and you were you were involved in the writing of that and Marty um, Balin, the, the late great Marty Balin. Yeah, um, I was doing an album with Marty uh, back in the 90s when I got with them. He asked me to produce a record. He flew out to L.A. and we were getting the studio set up. And uh, uh, the, uh, I, I had done another song at that, that uh, studio. It was an instrumental. And Marty just totally took to it. He, he took a pad out and he started scribbling down lyrics. And he, he wrote lyrics to the tune and we put it on that record. And... Uh, I'd forgotten about it, and uh, after he passed mm, about two years ago, someone uh, a friend of ours had posted it on Facebook, and 
yeah, it seemed like a great opportunity to, to revisit it. And David sang it beautifully. And it's called Don't Be Sad Anymore. And everyone weeps when they hear it. I feel like it's gone wrong. <laughs> oh, that's so Here's good. The joy. Here's the joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it'll yeah. probably it'll be the next wedding song. There you go. There you Please, go. Lord, bless you for the, uh, curse me with a hit. <laughs> <laughs> How is this album different to the like to the to the older? I know that's a really loaded question because every decade you guys have a different sound, which is amazing. You know. Uh, well, we have the the bass player from uh, Pete Sears from Jefferson Starship, uh, and writing the songs with the old guard, and uh, we really look to Paul Kantner's spirit to guide us through most of this. So I don't know. I feel like we kind of feel like it is from the old and just trudging forward. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so fantastic. Yeah. I think that Paul always, you know, had this vision of this band being a collective and bringing in whoever the best people were around and available at the time. And that's how Jefferson Starship was kind of formed out of Jefferson airplane breaking up. Well, Marty Ballin's leaving. Who's, who's the best male vocalist in San Francisco, David Freiberg, let's get him in, you know, and, uh, and recruited the young uh, Craig Chiquiso. He was 19 years old when Jefferson Starship formed and Pete Sears was around making records and everybody was kind of there. And, you know, everybody came in and did their thing and everybody brought their own songs in mm. and they brought it together with the band. Everybody, you know, put their own stamp on it through the changes over the years. That's, the role that everyone has kind of had. And Paul brought all of us into this current version of the band. And we toured with him for many years before he passed away. And, uh, you know, and then we were handed to, uh, to carry on. And so I think the music is, is new. We, we put it, we made it with a thought of legacy act, but also we want, to present our own voice in this in this legacy too and so uh it's really exciting to bring in some of the original players and um songwriters and then interpret these new songs write our own songs um i've been waiting to do this since i joined the band it's a complete thrill because it's been what 14 years since you guys have put an album out 14 years uh, yeah, something 12. like that 12 yeah. 12 15. Yeah, when Kathy first came in, we 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 made uh, Jefferson Jefferson's Tree of Liberty, but that was mostly old folk songs. Are you guys putting this out on a record on vinyl? Yes, yes, you got it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think that's coming back again? I, I hope so. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, Everybody's it's doing getting bigger now. all the time. And we've got Donnie back. We've got Donnie. Welcome, welcome back, Donnie. Donnie. Unbe fucking believable. <laughs> <laughs> I want to move back to the valley. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, am I right in saying that the live performances is the sweet spot? That's the high. That's the what you do it all for. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's part of it. I think it's most of it for all of us. We love being together on stage. It's uh, we just have such a good time. Yeah, you know it's 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 always there. It's 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 a good thing. We love it, and and uh, yeah. we love each other. And uh, I don't know. What do you say about something that just feels so right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't be wrong. So now that Donnie's back, can we Yay. just ask you about about because you were the only only one in in the current lineup that was involved with the. With the the move to to Starship, correct? Yeah, it moved it moved from Jefferson Starship. I joined the band. It was Jefferson Starship, eighty two, and in the mid eighties, it kind of switched over and kind of went its own way with a little push from certain people. Um, yeah. David said goodbye. So David 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 didn't stick around. He left. David was lucky. He got out before. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a good time. It was it was really different. Um, you know, blinded by the light, so to speak. Um, you know, Grace was gone. Grace left in 80, 87. I left in 89. 
David left before Grace. Pete, um, Pete was there for a little bit mm. with the Starship, but uh, I left you know, it, 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 it we got we got different producers, we got different music. There was a lot of music that was coming in. Yeah, we had people in the band that really wanted hits, didn't really want to spend time writing. So the image, sound wise, music wise of the band, totally changed. I mean, it was really successful, but uh. You know, that type of success is, for me, it just doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem like it's it's part of what you do and, and how you express yourself musically. But, you know, it was a good time for what it was. Um, mm. It was a different band, different music, mostly different, different leaders, different producers, and mm. obviously different songwriters. Uh, not too many people in the band were writing songs um, mm. through all that. So... But uh, we did have a good time. It was it was different from the Jefferson Starship when I yeah. first joined the band, but it was cool, you know, live and learn. It feels right because we we kind of share everything with each other. And I mean, you know, we've been sitting in our home since March, but we talk every week. Yeah. Um, you know, thank God we had the new material. I don't know what you guys talked about while I was gone. Oh, everything else. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Pretty much. You know, no. I mean, thank thank God we have have this music. That, we that just talked about take, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that only lasts so long. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's we're blessed. We're blessed to have the new material, uh, everybody being a part of it. And that's really the magic that we have is we're a part of each other's life in doing this band and, and, uh, and it, it really comes out when we play live. And, uh, mm. of course we play everything else. It has anything to do with the history of the band. So it's a, it's a full movie. It's a 90 minute movie. You kind of got to be like that too, though, when you get to, to, to the, the, you know, I was going to say the age of the band of, of having so much history, right. That fans are going to expect it when they go to a concert. Right. Oh, I sometimes they say you didn't play my favorite, and it's hard to guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which one that is. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you got to give a little bit of of kind of each part of what the history of this band is. I think we do a yeah. good job of that. But there's always people out there that want to hear a certain song. We yeah. we do the best we can. You know, I mean, if we could do two or three hours with a break in between, <laughs> we could we could give them all the all they need. Wow, and what, we, a, what an amazing concert that would be. How has the new album been received so far? Uh, well, Kathy, really she's well. more on it than all of us, but uh, looks What's like it's doing like really that? well. How are the numbers? I, I don't know how the numbers are, but I, I can tell you, like, the social media, except for face, uh, except for YouTube, which is just the, one of the worst places on earth mm. for comments, but, uh, yeah. you know, the, uh, the Facebook and the uh, the comments from our actual fans are they like they really like it and, and we're really happy about that because that's those are the people we really want to please mm -hmm. there's always going to be people especially in in the states there people are real snarky uh and you know can be and that's a little frustrating um but i would say 90 percent of the reaction has been super positive people saying you know it it reminds them of the old band and it sounds new and fresh and it's yeah. on topic. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're pretty excited about it. I, you know, this, I just have to say that this interview, uh, for me personally <laughs> has been fantastic, uh, because of, uh, you know, the fact that, that you guys have been such a part of my, my life right through, um, you know, even from the early days. So, to hear that you guys are still out there honoring the 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 old music as well as the the bringing in the new music is a is a breath of fresh air. I'd be one of those guys in the concert to be like, play that song. <laughs> That's cool. That's okay. We don't mind. Jews like going, go away, go away. <laughs> we built this city. We're, we're very giving if we can. You know, we we would love to play anything and everything that anybody wants to hear. Yeah. Um. We yeah. you know, we have great fans. We were talking about New Zealand in January, but they want us to quarantine on a beach there for 10 days or something before the first show. So, you know, threaten That'd us be with hard. a good time. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, hard, yeah. I'll hang out for two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Now, I mean, you guys have been pretty political, like in, in terms of as a, as a band, you know, with, with having a voice. 
I mean, do you guys have a have a, a particular voice as to what's going on in America? And and I mean, even with it's time, you know, it's about time. That's a a pretty motivated song as well, right? I mean, how do you feel about the current state in America? Yeah, it's perfect timing. Perfect timing without well, us really knowing about it. What? Yeah. Oh man. One hundred percent. There's another single out. I'm not sure if we talked about it. Uh, what are we waiting for? That you know, we finished and recorded and filmed the video in October. That's the second just, single. The awesome. second single came out a few days ago, and uh, just I look at it and it's it's so prescient. Like it looks like we put it together a week ago. The way that the protests are filmed inside this video and the lyrics about like what are we waiting for as far as changing the world and. You know, it's even for me, so close to it, all of us, it's like it's kind of emotional to see it. Yeah. It is. Check that out. It's unreal. There there does need to be change that comes through. And I think it's it's change that like what you're talking about here, you know, starting like just as a band making change and then it's going to expand out through to to all of us, you know? Well, Well, you know, music is a great way to express yourself and what you're feeling and thinking about and, you know, um, I think this band has always used the microphone to speak to, you know, the greater truths and, um, you know, especially Paul Kantner, who was, he still is our guiding light. I mean, he's, he's not with us on this planet, but he's definitely, uh, helping us from another place, I believe. And, um, you know, that's, that's a really important thing for us to carry that fire, carry the spirit, carry the, Legacy. The voice for social justice and for change, carry it forward into the new times. And, you know, like Grace said, everything is, it's all cycling over again. You know, it's been 50 years and here we are again. We've got racial strife in the, in the United States. And I know it's all over the world, but, you know, it's these things that you, we think that we've moved past it. And then we realize that we really haven't. And, um, you know, the, the women's movement in 19... 19- 72, the Equal Rights Amendment was passed in the United States, but it was, it still has never been ratified into the Constitution. So just in, in a little bit later tonight, I'm going to be singing for a concert, uh, uh, online concert for the ERA singing, singing It's About Time because literally in 2020, women don't have equal rights in, in the United States. We don't have rights to equal pay. Um, a lot of, a, a lot of disparities in the healthcare system and all kinds of things. And, um, you know, so it's like, we're still fighting this fight. Uh, unbelievably. I mean, isn't, that's, isn't change really that's the best thing about it. The real change happens when everything bubbles to the surface and we can't ignore it any longer. And we're kind of forced right. to change. People have to go into whether it's yeah. a physical, spiritual, mental sort of hardship and stuff like that before they're actually forced into that moment of change. So, And I think that that's what's going on right at the moment. Oh, I think you're right, yeah. With yeah, all the, the, the big it's way. almost like a pressure cooker. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the it takes light shining on these issues for people to realize that they're even there, you know, like, like we were all kind of lulled into this, oh, you know, we beat racism and we have civil rights now and we have equality and all this stuff. But, you know, having an extremely racist president uh, has brought all the racists out of the woodwork and now they feel emboldened to just be, you know, like out there. It's crazy. I can't even believe. And, you know, we also, the other thing we have now that we didn't used to have is cell phone videos, you know, and, uh, and I think that is waking up a lot of people too. What's what goes on in places that you, you don't see it. Now we see it because people are filming it and everything. Yeah. Well, look, we, we do have to finish up because I know you guys have got a, a, another interview to do it just in, in closing. Is there any memory in you know over the, this whole time, and and maybe David might be a good good one to answer this. Is there a memory uh, just in in your whole time with Jefferson Airplane and also Jefferson Starship that you that is really in, you know on your mind and and that you'd like to share with everyone? Uh. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so deep. I don't, the thing that gets me it, it, about it, Jefferson it was, is, is what Paul's main thing was, and it's together. Yeah, we can be together. 
We can go together. Let's get together. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 been my whole thing ever since I started singing folk music before I even plugged in. And I and I and with Paul Kantner too, and and I know with Marty too. Mm. Marty Allen. And the times when it's the times when everybody's together is when it's really happening. Yeah. And that yeah. happened that's happened probably once in the Jefferson airplane, sometime in the Jefferson airplane, although I didn't seem to be there at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly was a couple of times, a couple of three times in Jefferson Starship, especially yeah. now. So, yeah, yeah. So that, that's being together is the, the big thing for me. We gotta be together. We can't do it apart. Yeah, or we're that's gonna right. Fighting, and that's no good for anyone. Same is true for the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah. Are you, are you going to be fighting all the time? Yeah. Yeah. The hard, the hardest thing is not knowing when we're going to be together on stage again. So <laughs> we're doing anything and everything to kind of fill that void. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not knowing when we're going to play together is. But here is, we are together. To, it's torture. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, like the, you, you guys are doing like online concerts and things like that now, playing with one another still through Zoom and that. Yeah, we have some yeah. things out there. Yeah, making as videos. Much as we can. We're kind of like doing that today, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a the new album. Make sure that uh, you go out and grab it. It is Jefferson Starship, Mother of the Sun. It's available in all good record stores. Don't don't Golden stream. Robot Records. Don't stream it. Buy the record. Buy the vinyl. Can they get the box? <laughs> oh, the space box. We didn't talk about the space oh, box. Yeah. They don't. They can't get the space box. They'd have to order it as a um, an import. Yeah, oh. but I can show you the space box. It's pretty cool. So the oh yes, please do. So the space box is obviously the the greatest hits or like like all of the albums. No, 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 no. no the space boxes are our custom CD artwork that we had made, which folds out from this yeah. into the transformers oh my god it's like a box dude. check this out it's a box and it's you got your stash artwork in it. <laughs> and it opens up and you can put all your stash in there nice. you can put a pretty big stash in here yeah, you can put whatever you want yep at whatever you want um and it's a beautiful art piece the artwork is done by a young artist here in the United States named Nicholas Moeller. Yeah. And he's so young. I don't even think he even has ever seen a CD before. That's how, <laughs> that's how old we are. Like CDs are out of date. Yeah. Uh, he designed this incredible package and uh, we're very proud. Very proud. All right, guys. Well, we are out of time. Thank you all. Yeah. David, Kathy, Jude, Chris, Donnie. Thanks for joining well, thank us. You all. Thank you, guys. Anyways, be safe. We'll see you sooner than later. Thank you. You guys rock. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Sorry for so the Wi Fi screw up. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, that was hilarious, comic. actually. So. <laughs> it was a comic genius. I, I, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Was just, <laughs> Is everybody keep there? Bat, go, keep bat, eat, go, oh, it's funny. Go, eat. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Long Way to the Top. Hit plus or follow to subscribe to the podcast and head over to Facebook at The Long Way to the Top Podcast and give us a like. Keep on rocking and I'll catch you on the next episode of Long Way to the Top. <laughs>